Good evening. U.S. President Joe Biden and his Russian counterpart, President Vladimir Putin, will hold a video call on Tuesday. It comes after Secretary of State Antony Blinken said the U.S. had evidence that Russia had made plans for a large-scale attack on the Ukraine. The White House says Biden will underscore the U.S. concerns with Russian military activities on the border with the Ukraine. More than 94,000 Russian troops are believed to be unmasked near the Ukraine's borders. Ukraine defense, defense minister has said that Moscow may be planning a large-scale military offensive at the end of January. Citing intelligence reports, the U.S. officials ha come to uh, similar conclusions. They said the U.S. Secretary of State has warned Russia of severe consequences if it invades Ukraine. Biden, meanwhile, has rejected Russian demands for security guarantees in the region. The U.S. president says he and his advisers are preparing a comprehensive set of initiatives aimed at deterring Putin from an invasion. He did not give further details, but the administration has discussed partnering with European allies to impose more sanctions on Russia. I'm now to talk a little bit more about this. We're joined by international relations expert Professor John Stremler. Professor Stremler, a very good evening to you and thank you so much for joining us. As we said, President Biden will no doubt underscore the fact that the U.S. has concerns about Russian military activities and that it will reaffirm the United States support for Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. But more importantly, what do you expect from President Putin? We have mentioned that he has taken umbrage to suggestions that they are mounting some sort of offensive on the Ukraine border. Well, thank you and, uh, and good evening, uh, Sifiso. And, and you've certainly given a good summary for the viewers of the situation because we really don't know what they will talk about. Uh, Biden has said that he hopes it'll be a long conversation, and I am always a little relieved whenever uh, heads of state talk to one another, particularly if they have tensions, as clearly there have been between Putin and uh, American presidents, um, especially uh, Biden and, and before that, uh, Obama. Uh, Trump was another matter. But in any case, um, we don't know um, whether or not these reports will lead to any kind of action, but they do seem credible, and the U.S. has released satellite imagery that suggests the rapid uh, deployment could be uh, occurring uh, in, uh, in the aftermath of the uh, new year. Uh, up to 175,000 is what uh, I think the Ukrainians are talking about the threat, and they only have about 80,000 at the border. So it would be quite a... Um, uh, powerful country against a weaker state. But don't forget this week, Thursday and Friday, is the uh, Biden summit on democracy, and uh, a summit for democracy. And authoritarian, countering authoritarianism is one of the first topics, but also uh, Ukraine is, has been invited and will be going. Georgia, which the Russians invaded not so long ago, and uh, 10 years or eight years ago now, I guess, um, Georgia will be going. Uh, and then the, 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 the bright stars that are part of NATO, Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania, um, Moldova is also going. So there, there are going to be quite a few uh, of, of, of Putin's backyard at the democracy summit. And so it's, it's, it's good to rattle the chains a little bit, I think, from his perspective right now and to get the world a little distracted from the democracy summit. Mm -hmm. Uh, we'll get to the Democracy sum Summit in just a moment, Professor Stremler, but an expert we spoke to yesterday seemed to suggest that Russia does not have the military capacity for the type of military buildup which is set to be occurring on the Ukraine border. But Russia itself has accused Kyiv of having its own military deployment. Who do we believe here? Well, I think you have to believe that um, Russia has the military capacity. Now, what the West might do to respond, including Biden, because the Ukrainians could get missiles and other hardware. Uh, there is a bill in Congress, uh, in the Senate already, an amendment, 
to uh, give uh, more lethal weapons to the Ukrainians. Uh, you know, there is a history here. In 2014, uh, Putin annexed Crimea, which was a part, is a part of Ukraine, although heavily populated by Russian retirees. And there is not the kind of nationalism in Crimea that there is in the rest of, um, in the rest of Ukraine. And I think it, it is a credible uh, threat, counter threat, that the nationalism could lead to a kind of Afghanistan-like situation for the Russians if they are not able to uh, mount a, a, a quick victory in the event that they were to invade. And there would be pushback and they would alienate okay. Europe. So I, I think this is saber rattling. Uh, I think the agenda of strategic stability and cyber and regional conflicts also justify a conversation between Biden and Putin. That's what they've announced as the agenda. Uh, and so uh, I think it's a good thing they're talking, but we won't know, and even probably after the event, we won't know what they actually said. So one observer said this is a perfect opportunity for a show of leadership, especially within diplomacy. But it must start from where this all traces back to. So you mentioned the Crimea and what happened in 2015, uh, Russia's annexation uh, in 2014. There is uh, Syria, as I mentioned, in 2015, the intervention of Russia there. And there are U.S. accusations against Russia of it being instrumental either in the meddling of the appointment or pushing for the appointment of uh, President Donald Trump. So would all of this history come back to it? Would they be picking at old wounds or, or saying, you know, this is the standpoint from which we're arguing what is going on now? Well, I think the, 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 you, your, your reference to interference in U.S. elections is a valid one because in 2016 and in 2020, although they were different in the two instances, but clearly... Uh, they did put their hands on the scales for Donald Trump in, in 2016, and we've had the, the full report on that, uh, uh, even though the Republicans want to ignore it. But I think it's more important to look forward. And the United States and, uh, and Russia now do have large nuclear capacities, so strategic stability is really important. And the Russians have been involved in, Rus in ransomware. There was a revelation uh, a few months ago of, of a lot of disruption of, of oil production and of other uh, companies' uh, operations by, uh, by, it turns out, a Ukrainian and a Russian, at least that was the allegation from the, um, uh, the U.S. Justice Department against uh, the, this ransomware op opportunity. Uh, uh, Putin is up to mischief. You know, it's a, it's a country which is is trying to uh, flex its muscles on the world stage. He always regrets the collapse of the Soviet Union, uh, which of course made possible, made it easier for the uh, pressure to be mounted on the apartheid regime down here. Those, those events came together. Uh, and I think it's just uh, uh, important for all governments, including the South African government, to call for restraint, just like you do with China and, and Taiwan issue. These, these are sensitive issues for the countries close by, but they're also sensitive issues for sovereignty uh, freedoms and uh, the opportunity to adopt democracy if you want to do that. Uh, you, Ukraine's got a very lively civil society, a free press. It's got a lot of corruption. It's not um, among the uh, stars of uh, democracy that uh, Latvia, uh, Lithuania, uh, uh, and uh, Estonia are. But, um, but nevertheless, it's, it's struggling. And uh, to, to have it invaded by the Russians right now would be very, very destabilizing to international relations. And I hope it doesn't occur. And I don't think it will occur, frankly. Mm. So just on that point, Russia has denied that it tolerates cyber attacks. And this is at a time when ahead of that meeting on Tuesday that the U.S. president says he and his advisors are putting together a comprehensive set of initiatives, as they put it, to deter the Russian president from an invasion. So would, for instance, what we mentioned before, Russia joining up with European allies to impose more sanctions on Russia, would that be incentive enough? 
Well, you never know until it's tried, but it, uh, it certainly it, it would alienate. And, and there is this gas pipeline, which is going to Germany that the U.S. has not been happy with, but is going ahead and, and that could be shut down. And there, there, there are ways to, to increase the pressure on, on, uh, on Russia. And, and Putin's got his own domestic uh, problems, but he is um, uh, clearly a dictator. He's a lot smarter than Donald Trump, but he's not known for his truthfulness as Trump was certainly not known for. Uh, and, uh, and we'll have to wait and see, but uh, this is the case where I think Biden is right to say uh, no red lines, we're not gonna have a, a, a joint security agreement that would pledge not to allow Ukraine into NATO. Uh, that's something that the Russians are very sensitive about. I don't think it's gonna happen. The, Rus the Ukrainians would like to join NATO, but I think right now you just have the status quo as much as possible. And I think that's what Biden is gonna say. You know, he's, gonna, he's an experienced guy in talking with Putin. They knew, knew him during his vice presidency for Obama and, and before that. So um, there are no illusions on either side. That was the uh, result of the, uh, that was the outcome that I, I commented on when the, the Geneva occurred back in meeting occurred between Putin and, and uh, Biden in July. And, and uh, and, and, and Biden is very careful about building his uh, allies in, in Europe now to help con contain uh, Russia. So uh, I, I think this is a chance for the two to, to talk and then maybe uh, let's see if, if they can find a way forward without uh, backing down uh, in either case. Mm -hmm. As we mentioned earlier on that Russia says it will ask of the U.S. security guarantees for the region, but we also understand that the two parties will also be discussing the implementation of agreements reached in Geneva at a summit that they had in June. So what sort of discussions would occur around that and what kind of guarantees can Russia legitimately ask for? Well, I don't think Russia is in a position to ask for the kind of guarantees that Putin has indicated he wants, which would be a permanent pledge that uh, NATO would not consider um, uh, Ukrainian membership. After all, uh, governments don't uh, like to uh, agree if they're on an escalation risky course. And right now, it's better to just calm the waters and as, as Biden has repeatedly said, I'm not going to take any redlining from from uh, from Vladimir Putin, but on the other hand, uh, let's talk and let's find a way forward together. We've got a lot of other things on our agenda. Syria conflict is one, for of, of course, where where Russia has been very much allied with the Assad regime against uh, some some really doing some really terrible things in Syria, and and I know that Biden will want to talk about that. They will want to talk about cyber ransomware and, and and that's fair and then and then putin i'm sure has his agenda of, of lists but putin is 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 trying to show as as xi jinping in china is trying to show that authoritarian governments can offer more reliable partnerships to the third world to african countries for example than western democracies and uh and and, and certainly the problems facing the u.s democracy right now are enormous just as they are down here uh, whether or not these democracies can pull together, uh, Putin doesn't want to not want to see that happen because he doesn't doesn't well, he wants to stride on his own terms in, internationally. We all understand that, but he's not going to be able to, I don't think. So uh, this is going to be a chance for Biden to talk frankly to him. All right, thank you so much for your time and your insight, Professor John Stremla. He's an international relations uh, expert. When we do come back after the break, we'll be talking about human rights, this time looking at Afghanistan and the various claims that have been made about the Taliban apparently taking out former members of the regime, particularly the military, the U.S., joining a host of countries, putting out a statement of condemnation. More details of that when we come back. This is The Globe.